Science of reading is the fundamental foundation for instructing young minds, young brains, young learners to have that strong foundation for literacy. Up to third grade, we learn to read. From after third grade, we read to learn. And that's what we're really all about here this week and throughout the year. As the president and CEO for the Center for Literacy and Learning, Plain Talk is our signature event. It's not the only work that we do, but it's an incredibly important part of what we're doing. And that's why we're celebrating our 27th annual uh, event bringing thousands of educators from all over the country together because we believe literacy is that important. We can truly help each and every one of our students discover their potential and it's through the literacy piece. So that passion, that energy, and of course all the expertise in one place. It's the first time I attended um, this event three years ago in this role with the center. It was just amazing and um, eye-opening to see so many educators at the forefront of their practice truly fighting for what's best for our students. 30th anniversary, I think the most important message is that we started as a movement with one person, one individual who shared that passion and that fire. 30 years later, we're serving thousands of educators, tens of thousands of families, and many community stakeholders here in Louisiana and across the nation. It's the gathering of the practitioners, the researchers, and those in the classroom who are really implementing that latest research. And I think that's what's important. This is one of the largest gatherings of any kind really truly focus on that early literacy piece and that's important. It's important to know that it's happening every year right here in Louisiana. Find the time. I would tell our superintendents, our district leaders, our school leaders, this is the best investment that you can make in your educators and your team to truly create uh, opportunities for them to grow and flourish in their work. You know, as we celebrate our 30th anniversary, we know the best is yet to come. We are piloting and launching this new innovative program, Louisiana Reads, where we're going to work to engage families and communities to make it a true team effort. Our families have to share in that work with our educators, and our community has to share in that work with our educators to get our students to the level of uh, reading attainment that we all desire for them to be. Well, today we're here to get some good ideas about literacy. Uh, literacy is a focus of the state of Louisiana as well as uh, Madison Parish School District. Uh, last year, we last year was my first year in Madison Parish, and we, you know, observed and we looked at the uh, looked at the data to see what where our kids were uh, low performing. And literacy, of course, is a big piece uh, starting off. Plain Talk is one of the most nationally known um, conferences uh, that focuses on literacy. We've met um, in Northeast Louisiana at the University of Louisiana Monroe. It was the first time that I've met with the, the center. Um, and they gave us some pointers at that time, regionally. And, um, you know, here, just coming down, coming here, just uh, compounded what we need to know about literacy. You're never going to be in a space with so many experts in this field. And just to have this opportunity to come here and focus and really think deeply, network with other people who are committed to the same work. I think for teachers, I hope they leave with some, some practical knowledge that's going to change their practice tomorrow. I think that, um, you know, that's always the hope is that they kind of take something that they see is really going to make a meaningful impact right away, not five years down the line or two years down the line like tomorrow. And I think for site level leaders and administrators, I think what I really hope is that they leave with an understanding of how they can better support their teachers. And I think, you know, it's so important for their, our leaders to understand the science of reading if they're going to support their teachers in the classroom. I'm just so excited to see all of the different scholars like kind of presenting their research and their ideas and just to kind of really learn more so I can better support teachers and leaders doing this really important work and keeping the science of reading at the um, forefront. It's just um, it's exciting to be a part of this movement and I'm just so grateful for the work that you guys do to kind of bring it to the forefront. Look, I think we have a literacy crisis in the state of Louisiana and, and every partner that we can find uh, that wants to engage in this work, we need to make sure that we're providing them the opportunity to do that. Uh, the Center for Literacy and Learning is one of the partners uh, that we have in the state of Louisiana. They're not simply just working with the Department of Education. 
They're working with school systems, they're working with local communities, uh, and the more attention we can bring uh, to the literacy crisis, the better off we're all going to be. Oh, happy birthday. I didn't know it was the 30th birthday, but uh, glad to be here uh, with the center, glad to be here at Plain Talk. Uh, to support uh, all the work that's happening. I attended Plain Talk as a school administrator. It was a, a really great experience for me. Uh, <laughs> it uh, helped me in many ways, and so I would encourage anyone who has the opportunity to come and visit Plain Talk. I choose to come to Plain Talk this year and every year because it's the conference to attend and learn. Um, if you're an educator in literacy and you care deeply about um, ensuring kids can read, write, and spell, uh, it's just a wonderful conference. Amazing presenters um, who depart not only knowledge but practice. It's the conference to attend. Plain Talk kindly just recently did a scholarship for William Van Cleef, so um, I always remember his, of course I remember many people's presentations, but William's presentations really have strong memories for me, uh, both before and, and now. But all conferences at um, Plain Talk are absolutely, ama absolutely amazing. As you hear people leaving the, the sessions, they're saying how wonderful they are, not only for what they learn, but they're thinking about how they're going to put it into practice. And that's the important part. As they come, you can't miss Plain Talk. You learn so much. Uh, the opportunity to not only learn from the presenters, but all the people who attend. I mean, you saw the thousands of people that are here. So it's an opportunity not only to learn from the amazing presenters, but also for those who attend. And also, it's such a great conference, so well run, I love the music, love New Orleans, you can't, you can't miss it. Last year, I attended the virtual version of it, and I was a moderator and helped um, with the running of several sessions on that, so this is year two. Just as great as online, even better because we're in person. It's been exciting to um, hear the researchers, hear the presenters, and also just see the excitement of the coaches and the teachers and just... Just being back together again has been wonderful. I hope they take away excitement again because I feel like because we've been in the pandemic, um, we've gotten a little bit down. Um, we're getting this new um, knowledge with the science of reading, um, but sometimes we're in our own little silos where we're working through it. So I'm hoping after this event, they take it, they branch it out, and it just spreads. Get in, get going. If you have a question, contact us at the department. We'll guide you through. But the first step is to have a team to go and experience it, and then have your teachers and keep going. I think my favorite part, again, has been being interactive, seeing everybody, seeing all of our, li our literacy coaches around the state. We just met for a group picture, um, getting to see people that you're seeing on Zoom, getting to talk to them. But I think one of my key people, um, has been um, listening to Dr. Julie Washington and just her discussions on um, just things, important things that we have to do and giving children that civil right of being a, being a, becoming readers. So that's been my, what I'm taking away, just her and pulling up more information and digging up more on her. We were able to, um, with the help of our superintendent, we were able to uh, reserve funds for all of our literacy coaches to come and attend. So um, when we talked with CLL, we think that normally 4% may be coming from Louisiana, and this year they had over 40% of Louisiana. So this is a big burst for them, seeing that right in our state we have this going on. Happy 30th, and just keep on doing good things for our state and for our state and beyond our state. This is the place to be for literacy instruction. So all of the big names, all of the people you see on the Amplify podcast, the researchers, all of the information comes here to Plain Talk. So it's definitely a win for districts to send their principals, their teachers, their literacy curriculum developers in their parishes and around the country to come. So it's not just how important the science of reading is. I feel like some of our attendees do come with that knowledge base, but it's how do you take that back to your classroom and how do you implement that in your schools and make those changes so that you can see the growth that we need so badly in our students. We're trying to make shifts in our um, program with literacy right now, so we're trying to build our knowledge, engage our students, and increase our teacher knowledge as well. I'm being exposed to a lot of information, mainly um, some of the things that we have been utilizing that doesn't um, agree with the science of reading. So we need to make those instructional shifts in order to promote literacy within our students and we need to also gauge them in the tiers. Make sure that we're having those best practices in place so that we can engage the readers and grow them using um, phonetic skills, decoding, and the big thing is the simple view of reading. Decoding, 
times language comprehension equals reading comprehension. So we're going to focus on that, get an action plan in place. And um, I learned a lot about um, creating a literacy plan. So we're going to talk about that, review data, and try to create one of those to move our district. I would tell them this is one of the best conferences that you can invest in. Go ahead and start writing those necessary grants and get your teachers, your um, coaches, and your administrators here. This is about my third or fourth time coming to Plain Talk. It's something to always keep us thinking and, and revisiting what we think about teaching and learning in classrooms. The practicality of the information we're learning, so how research is taken, and it's not so much just research language, but how it's practical use for teachers and others in education to be able to go back and apply it in the classroom. Um, and especially when I get to visit with teams of people, like right now I'm here with my principal and 10 other people out of our building. So we've kind of had our own little learning network and being able to rethink current practices and like changes and possible things moving forward. Even if it's again, like we've think, thought about because we took all of our reading teachers or brought all of them this year and then our certified reading interventionist. So how do we become more coherent across grade levels, thinking about what practices that we're currently having in place? Well, maybe we need to readjust those or if it's addressing different demographics of learners, how do we continue revisiting just thinking about what's best for all of our learners as they continue to grow. Because most school districts have to do like school-wide improvement plans or just kind of what are their visions, look at what is being offered at the conference and then think about how many of these sessions aligned to those different areas of focus that they're looking for within their building and kind of go from there. Like I think it is it's probably one of my favorite conferences and I go to many conferences and I love reading like I'm that one person like nobody wants to talk about curriculum, I'm that person. I enjoy it, I love talking about school, learning and, and again this is one of my favorite ones, it's just so practical. Like I can didn't just think to meet people like Judy Dotson. Like you read the book and then oh this is an actual person. So absolutely I think a district would enjoy coming and, and getting to see those who the experts who write the books and who do the research and do the grunt work that we don't usually don't do unless you're interested in research, but for someone to come and have those conversations and know they're so approachable and personable and to ask additional questions like, well, this is what you said, but now let's talk more about my specific situation. So I think a district would very much benefit from attending a session like this. I, I appreciate from the center. Um, so I think the first year I came was the year uh, with Katrina, so it was actually hosted in Chicago. So when I think about that experience and then coming back to New Orleans, the several sessions after that, um, I appreciate that the center continues to evolve as the changes and whatever the, the topics are that's buzzing in education, staying current with those conversations. So I would say with the center, like, keep us abreast of what's, what's the the language, what's going on in education for some classroom teachers or those in education who may not know how to access that information. Like, I appreciate that you stay on top of what's going on in classrooms for us to stay, like, in the know of education. Come learn all you can. We are face to face for the first time in two years and there is so much to learn about teaching kids how to read and there's so much that we need to gather and glean and my message here is for educators to take it all in, learn learn as much as they can to take back back as much as they can back to the to their schools. When I was actually an educator or a teacher in the classroom, I didn't know about the science of reading and I didn't know the research. Um, but in my work over the years, I have come to learn it and I've come to understand how significant it is when we actually deliver that kind of instruction. And so for me, as the host of a podcast, it's also getting the message out to teachers, hearing from the researchers so they can translate that into practice and what does it mean every day for them. So really just encouraging them to be lifelong learners. Plain Talk is the premier conference for the science of reading. And so I have been here for as many years as I can be here, but um, speakers are hand-selected and chosen, like exhibitors are hand-selected and chosen, so it's an unusual conference in that the conference organizers pick the people that they want to do the presentations as opposed to people like submitting for proposals. And I, see, I think that says a lot about the way the conference is organized. I actually don't know how many times I've been here, quite a few. Um, my favorite Plain Talk memory 
was probably three years ago, so it would have been like 2019, the year before the pandemic. And the thing about that was, I think it was that year that things started to come together for me as a personally and professionally about the impact that this movement can have um, and the opportunity for that. Happy birthday. And, and, and I didn't realize that it was started by a parent that was trying to make a difference in the life of their child. And so to, for them to continue to grow and to develop out of that and continue the work, when it's not always easy, um, that just sort of that fortitude is amazing. But happy birthday to them. Region 2 is in North Louisiana, so I service four school districts in the northeast corner of the state. So closer to Mississippi. It is not my first time to come to Plain Talk. Um, I just started working with the center though this year and I'm extremely just blessed to work for this company. But um, I attended Plain Talk probably about 12 years ago and was blown away and then ended up sending a team of teachers from our middle school and just really just now honored to work for them. One of the main reasons that I chose to send a group of teachers when I was a principal was because they needed to understand the foundations in which our children were missing. Um, I was a middle school principal formerly and so there we have these big gaps and our teachers did not know how to fill those gaps or understand where those gaps came from and so this conference was one that really opened their eyes into understanding and to better assist our kids. We need to change the way that our reading instruction and what it looks like in our schools. We need to lay that strong foundation for our children and just how important literacy is. You send your kids to school, right? And you expect them to get the things that they're supposed to get. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. And so we want to be able to train our teachers and give them the information and equip them with the skills necessary to fulfill those goals and help our children become literate stay with us, right? I mean, we have a long road ahead of us here in Louisiana, but in the center's work all across um, America, just that it's, it's important. The work we're doing, these are, you know, it's kind of cliche, but it, they're our future. And, and these children deserve better. And this is what we want to give them. Plain talk is tried and true. And so it is the premier Science of Reading Conference, and we come for the information, for the connections, um, to be able to see the friends that we've seen for years coming, so it's an important part of our year. I'm a huge fan of Mickey Smith's uh, current keynote, Just Keep Going, so that's brilliant. Um, and it is probably the connections and the conversations that you get to have with the network of friends um, across the country. It's just unparalleled time to be able to connect. The information is spot on with the science of reading and so I think staying uh, abreast and upfront with all of those um, new learnings, uh, reminding ourselves what best practice is, being able to promote that. There's no other conference that does that quite so well. So Plain Talk is the, the tried and true version of that. Um, and we come every year for the connections and the information. We are so grateful for the years of support, of research, for bringing people together in this common um, mission um, to create literacy for all. So happy 30th. I had never been to Plain Talk before, but I do a lot of the science of, um, of reading podcasts put on by Amplify. And I kept hearing people going, you have to come to Plain Talk, or I learned this at Plain Talk, or did you hear this discussion about Plain Talk? So I started re researching what Plain Talk was, and they have so many big names. And it's like, yes, we have to come to Plain Talk, because we could just see how powerful it was. Absolutely, absolutely fabulous. Everything from the kickoff yesterday morning by with Mr. Smith, Fabulous! Oh my goodness! Just so you just you're so motivated being here. You know, New Orleans does everything in a big way. So what am I enjoying? Over and over again, we're hearing about the science of reading and how important it is that we use evidence-based strategies to teach our kids to read and write, um, encode, spell, read, decode, and use language. Incredibly powerful. The sessions have been amazing. This is what kids really need in order to break the code: read and write and be proficient communicators. Thank you so much, and I. I only wish I would have known about Plain Talk sooner than I did. I think the biggest thing is we have to inform all stakeholders, whether it's legislation, classroom teachers, district admins, uh, paraprofessionals, that we have to leave this conference knowing that there has been 40 plus years of research and we should still, there shouldn't still be a debate of how we teach kids to read. I originally was fully trained and immersed in balanced literacy. 
And when I moved back to the south to Louisiana, we heard the same message that kids can't read. So we implemented science of reading training to empower our teachers of just the knowledge of why the, the brain works the way it does. And it wasn't really about the tool in the teacher's hands, but the teacher teaches kids to read, not a curriculum. So when we made that transition for teachers and empowered them with that knowledge and made very intentional choices, our growth in third grade alone went up from 18% to 43% in one year. And we were seeing that happen with every single grade level and even had it um, on a case study on EAB national, um, narrowing the third grade reading gap. So it has been super impactful and eye-opening for teachers to realize that if we're using strategies that are debunked by science, we have to stop immediately. And if it's going to be something that works for all students, then that's what needs to happen. My favorite part about Plain Talk and what my selling point when I try to tell everyone about it is that you're coming to a conference that is very uh, vetted in their speakers, whether even exhibitors. And the message is going to be the same. We're Whatever session you attend, the underlying message is based on the science of research, 40 plus years, neuroscience, cognitive science, linguistics, and structured literacy, and you're not going to get contradicting information. You are going to leave with tools and ideas that at a district level you could implement or down to a classroom level that you can take and, and really just get you fired up to, to keep advocating for students in literacy. I have attended Plain Talk, I think this is my eighth year attending Plain Talk and uh, I was fortunate enough I actually worked for two years for the Center for Literacy and Learning so I know the behind the scenes as well. My favorite memories, you know, I think it's, well of course the food is always a wonderful here and they, they treat you so well. But again, it's, you can tell this is the place to be. It is the top of the top. Every researcher that you read their books and you just, you know, kind of swoon over as, as they're rock stars, they are here and they're also in sessions learning with you. Happy birthday to the Center for Literacy and Learning 30th anniversary. The work that has been going on for over 30 years is imperable to students' growth, not just in Louisiana, but through the United States, through worldwide. They are true advocates and they all are focused on the same vision and mission to provide literacy for students and that all students can learn to read. I think keep fighting the good fight is, even though I, there's times where you feel like you're just a Joe Schmo and, and you, know, you don't have the power to make changes maybe in your district or your school, but coming to a conference like this, hearing from the researchers, you, you don't just leave with saying, I know my kids can't read. You can leave and say, they can't read and here's why. And here's the research. And we need to take a serious look at making some systematic changes. Change is uncomfortable, but it's necessary if we want to adjust and fix these literacy rates. It's, it's a no-brainer. You have to attend Plain Talk. It's, again, like I've said, this was career changing for me. This was not just a networking and, and meeting people from various states, but you all have the same passion and you're coming together and learning and strengthening your learning about the science of reading. Every year it gets better and better and your learning builds upon each other every session you go to. So Louisiana specific, we know that we have 30, 40% of students that are proficient. It's not okay. And again, we have research that shows what we need to do. We just need to listen to it and follow it and stop the debates of which strategy versus this strategy. We have to come to consensus and know that to move our state forward economically, the pipeline to prison, healthcare, I mean at a bare minimum we, we want our students to be middle class and really that's, we want more for them but at a bare minimum and if our parents are trusting us in Louisiana to take their students in and to teach them to read and we're failing them, it's just, it's not okay. Well, we are here to learn a lot about the science of reading and how to implement that in our schools and help support our teachers. This is our first year to have literacy coaches and we have three in our district. We're a small district and they are going through the process now to learn about the science of reading. Um, I will tell you that I'm also in charge of our summer learning program which is in June and we use that not only to support our students uh, but we also use it for PD for our teachers so I'm working with the literacy coaches and they will as our teachers teach summer school in the morning that afternoon they will analyze their data 
from that morning, and then they will work with our literacy coaches to implement the science of reading and how does that support their planning for the next day and their what did they see in their student work analysis and then how can this the, the knowledge of the science of reading help them to plan for the next day's lesson and differentiation our coaches and our teachers are in these rural districts and they don't get to network with other people and they don't get to have outside experiences outside of their district and outside of their classrooms. So when they get to come to things like this, they get to meet new people, they get to learn new ideas, they share ideas, they receive ideas, um, and they learn awesome new things and get to talk to vendors and learn new things. So. The keynote speaker was a lot of fun this morning, very energetic, very inspiring. Uh, it was a great way to start the day and just I've enjoyed the part of learning from the leader's perspective because that's what I do. And then my coaches get to go to different sessions and learn from a coach's perspective. So we all get to attend sessions based on what we actually do every day. I was actually honored to be asked to talk here um, about my research on high frequency words and how we translate research to practice. Love the energy. I'm used to being at research conferences and there is not this kind of enthusiasm around certain topics such as high frequency words or sound walls or anything else and I just love the enthusiasm from the participants. My favorite memory is actually seeing how many people attended my session. I was shocked. I was really taken aback by the level of interest in these topics. I couldn't believe people were willing to sit on the floor to hear about a topic that has lived in the research and is making it into the practitioner realm. And I just give so much credit to practitioners who are taking all of this work and bringing it back to impact students. The research is always amazing. The quality of the sessions, they're incredible. I remember at first sitting next to the Tim Shanahan's and um, realizing that these are the presenters that actually come hear each other in each other's sessions. So to me that was amazing. The research they bring about the new research that they're doing in education, of course that was something that was new to me in the 90s. I didn't know we had educational research. We sort of just did things the way they were always done. So that opened up a new world to me. And then in 2003 I wrote the um, Reading First grant for our district and that was part, this was part of what we brought teachers to, we brought literacy coaches to, so we would have dozens and dozens of a gaggle of teachers coming. And that has al it's always been incredible. I've met wonderful, amazing people, um, professionals that have become my heroes, the people I read and look up for their studies to read about. So I just have to say that more than any other conference I've ever been to, this has impacted my level of expertise and my practice in my work. Honor to introduce a great friend and a even more phenomenal leader for education in Louisiana. Please help me in welcoming to the stage the Louisiana Superintendent of Education, Dr. Cade Brumley. Welcome to Louisiana. Uh, we are so glad that you are here. And I'll ask that all my Louisiana friends in the audience give a round of applause to all our visitors right now. Let me start by thanking um, not just the, the Center for Literacy and Learning and, and not just uh, everyone who's responsible for you being here, uh, but you've had individuals serving you uh, over the last couple of days. You've had individuals working technology. You, you've had individuals taking care of your various needs on the staff here at the hotel. And I just want to be gracious and thank the staff here at the hotel. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Southern hospitality. Okay, so here's the deal. I, I, I can't have educators in a room, especially given what we've been through over the last couple of years, and not tell you thank you. And so I know that you've probably heard thank you uh, many times, but you may not have heard it from me. And so I just wanna take this opportunity and walk you through some of the events that we faced over the last couple of years. I know that, that a great number of you in the room are from Louisiana, a great number of you aren't, but many of the challenges that we faced, we faced regardless uh, of our state of origin. You know, over the last couple of years, we've faced a global health pandemic. In the state of Louisiana, our schools were shut down on Friday the 13th 
of March in 2020. There wasn't a playbook on how to handle educating through a global pandemic, and we had to write that playbook along the way over the last two years. And I'll tell you, I have been nothing short of inspired and impressed and just so grateful for the heroic work of our educators over the last couple of years, not just to keep our kids and employees safe, but to ensure that we strung, strung through some form of an educational process for our kids. You know, here in the state of Louisiana, I, I like to brag on our teachers because we were rated as having the third most aggressive plan for education in terms of reopening and operation. We were rated consistently in the top 10 throughout the country for having the most students in daily face-to-face -face instruction. And we were able to do that because we had the right mitigation efforts in place. We were cognizant of the seriousness of the disease, but we also knew that we had a moral and professional obligation to take, take care of the needs of our kids and make sure that they got the education that they needed and deserved. Look, I was most concerned about our youngest learners, those learners in the foundational years that are only going to get first grade once. They're only going to get second grade once, and we know what happens to those kids if by the end of third grade they're not reading on grade level. We know that a student that's not reading on grade level by the end of third or fourth grade is three or four times more likely to be what? A high school dropout. Dropping out of high school does not begin in the ninth grade. Dropping out of high school begins much earlier than that. And so the, the main thing that we can do to prevent high school dropouts is to make sure, one, we have access to early care and education for all of our families and all of our students from birth to four, but also coupling that with sound practices in the teaching of literacy. We know that if kids drop out of high school, that they're more likely to, to have trouble throughout their life. And we know that 80% of individuals that are sitting in a prison in our country today do not have a high school degree. So I often get questioned, how do we solve these problems in education? I get questioned, how do we, how do we overcome some of the sins of the past? How can we do better to get outcomes? What, what is the silver book, uh, bullet? What is the golden ticket? And for me, the answers are quite simple. One, early care and, and education. I, I, I'm not going to go into all of those things, but, but the primary thing that we have to do is make sure that we have quality literacy instruction in our foundational years. And we have, for too long, taken that for granted. For too long, we have just assumed that our kids are going to learn how to read, they're going to go to school, the yellow bus, the big yellow dog is going to come pick them up, they're going to pick them up, take them to school, they're going to get dropped off by the end of the day, and the end of the week, at the end of the month, the end of the year, they're going to know how to read. And, and unfortunately for too many students, that's not the case. That's not what happens. Specifically our students who, who come from our most challenged communities, families that are economically disadvantaged, and so what do they need? They need adults like you in the room who are acting with urgency, who are not taking literacy for granted, who know that if you want better outcomes for kids, who if, if you know that you want your kids to be on grade level by the end of third grade and then become even a stronger reader throughout those years in their K-12 experience, you have to have a plan. You have to have a plan. And I will tell you and charge you here today that if your school day in your school looks the same today as it looked three years ago, not including mitigation, but if that day looks the same today that it did three or four years ago, I'm suggesting you are not being responsive to your children and you are not being responsive to their needs. So how, how might that day need to look different? How might that day need to look different? One thing, is I think every classroom teacher in this country deserves the ability every week to go into a room with their colleagues being led by a lead teacher, mentor teacher, master teacher, instructional coach, or assistant principal, looking at student data, making inferences about that data, making connections to curriculum, to instruction, to assessment, and thinking through how can they be a better teacher based on that data next week. Because if, if teachers, especially our, our, our novice teachers, have access to teacher leadership, not just someone who can point them to the restroom, not just someone who can point them to the copier, 
But true teacher leadership and mentorship, they're more likely to stay in the profession and they're more likely to be an effective teacher. So, so one, I think your day needs to look like that. If you don't have that built in your schedule, please do that. Please consider that. The second area that I think where your school day needs to look a little different is are you carving out time during the day with that schedule so that one, either students have access to intervention or extension in a thoughtful, systemic way, and or do those students have an opportunity to have access to high dosage tutoring, particularly in those key content areas such as literacy. That means your schedule has to look different. That means your staffing may have to look different. And so what I want to encourage you today is, is in whatever ways that you're able to impact your school day for next year in your schools, think about those two areas and think about how those things matter. Now, whenever we're talking simply about the importance of literacy, and I've already mentioned I feel like we've taken it for granted for way too long, and I think we have, and we have to be more urgent, we also have to be more thoughtful. You know, a lot of things matter. We have to have policies legislatively throughout the states that support the work that we're doing at state agencies, that support the work that we're doing within school systems and within our schools, and most importantly, within our classrooms. We have to make sure that, that state education agencies like our Louisiana Department of Education are wait, working to support practices that impact what's happening in the classroom, to make sure that teachers across our state and your states have the resources that they need to do the job that you need to do to not make your job more difficult, but to simplify your job, to, to make sure that you, are, you know the targets that need to be hit and making sure that you have the materials and training necessary to do that work. One of the things I consistently hear from, from teachers when I'm in, in schools is, we want training, we like training, we just want it to be worthwhile. We just want people to know what they're talking about when they tell us what they're telling us. And that's why events like this today are, are so important with the knowledge that you're going to take from here and go back into your own worlds. I am so thankful that you're here because we have a crisis with literacy, certainly in the state of Louisiana and maybe in your states as well. And we have tried to illuminate that challenge very significantly through our media outlets, through other stakeholders, through conversations with school systems. That, that we have a challenge and that we have to do better and guess what, our attention is on that challenge and our attention is on doing better and we're going to do it with a plan and we're going to do it with urgency and we're going to do it with resolve and stick with itness and perseverance and everything that we have to do to make sure that we muster the effort to make sure that we are doing better for kids and they get the outcomes that they need and deserve because I don't want our kids today in a prison in 20 years. And if we want that to happen, if we want that to happen, we have to make sure that our efforts are strong, they're sound, and they're based in the science of reading. And you, you all know that through your training yesterday and through your training today, you're learning a lot about the importance of the science of reading. You're learning a lot about back to the basics approaches that actually work for children. You're learning about targeted supports and targeted ways to be better that aren't practices of confusion and aren't practices that, that you just found somewhere on the internet, but are based in the science of reading that are actually going to make a difference in the lives of our children. And so I'm, I'm, inspi I'm inspired leaving here today because I know that I'm going to be able to say all day long, all week long, that I had the opportunity to visit with 1,800 educators from across the great country who care about this challenge that we are facing. In our state, we know that we need a revival around literacy. We know that we need to do better. We know that we are committed to do better. And I have Louisiana educators in this room that I am confident are going to help me get better outcomes for kids. When people ask me, what's your focus? You know, frequently I get asked that question and, and it's not hard. It's the things I've already mentioned early care and education, literacy, rethinking the high school experience so that, so that our students when they graduate on May 15th, May 16th, they're actually ready to do something. You know, these, these are very basic things and they're very basic things, but we have to do better in these things. And we need individuals like you committed to doing the work uh, every single day. You all are leaving here armed, hopefully, with new information. 
But beyond that, I hope that you are leaving here motivated and understanding with even more significance the enormity of the work that is in front of you. If you're not going to do it, who is going to do it? If you're not going to do it, are we going to continue to take reading for granted across the country? I, I, I suggest that that's not the path we're moving forward on. My suggestion is we've seen from some other states some of the efforts that work. We've seen from, from some great school leaders and some great classroom teachers who've been able to get great results, and, and, and those things are being shared with you here uh, over the course of this conference. So, so my simple hope is that whenever you leave here today, you're jazzed up to go back and do the work that you need to do. I, I was up at 4 a.m. to drive in to, to, to visit with you all today. Certainly uh, was excited about the opportunity, but driving in, I'm thinking, you know, what is it that, what is it that they even need to hear? And, and, and what came to me is, if I'm up at 4 a.m., and I have the opportunity to visit with 1,800 educators, I want you to know that we, all is not well with the children. All is not well with the children in terms of their ability to read. And the only way that that becomes better is if you help us make it better. And I believe that you can, I believe that you will, and certainly Louisiana educators, if, if, if our office can do anything to help you, let us know. Um, if you are uh, a visitor to our state, one more time just to say thank you for the last couple of years specifically of work. You are all heroes. It hasn't just been um, pandemic in our country. It, it has been hurricanes. It has been flooding. It has been ice storms. It has been social and, and civic unrest. And you have dealt with all of that every day in, in your schools. And, and for that, I say thank you. But I believe the final chapter of the pandemic is upon us, and we have a golden opportunity ahead to rethink the ways that we're handling some of the practices in our school. And I hope you step away thinking that you are the person that will help this country solve its literacy crisis. And for that, I'm thank you, thankful. So have a great day.